But again, you can look for that eviction judgment. If you have somebody that has a pattern of not paying their bills and there's a lot of collection cases against them or eviction cases, that person is probably not somebody that's going to be your ideal tenant. Everybody deserves a chance, that's true, but you have to make the judgment call on whether you're willing to take the risk or whether you can afford to be out a couple, three, four months of rent money because a lot of times that's how long it takes before somebody finally gets out and you get the property back suited up for rental. I also have to tell you, when you evict someone, Typically, people aren't happy when that happens, and sometimes they decide that they're just going to show you how unhappy they are by taking it out on the house or the apartment on their way out the door. They'll leave with a garage door opener, poke, punch holes in the walls, kick the doors down, um, tear down light fixtures and toilets, steal things, steal the appliances. It's not always a pretty scene. Sometimes they leave quietly, especially if we can get them to agree to it through mediation, but Eviction is just not always the best thing ever. Even when the judge gives you a notice that you can evict someone and gives you an order, a writ of possession, if they have left any belongings in the property, even if it looks like bags of garbage, you're not allowed to just throw it away. You have to arrange with the sheriff to rent a pod, and you have to pay for that to come, and then they will. you have to have them come and, and help you take everything out and that pod has to go in storage and we have to give the tenant an opportunity to collect his belongings. So not only are you out the rent money, but you're also out the money to hire the sheriff to get the pod to take this person's stuff, which obviously they didn't want because they left it there, but you still can't just throw it away. And so you, you've actually, it's actually cost you a little more money than that. Um, but you know, always like to tell you about the worst case scenario. Typically those things don't happen a lot, but sometimes they do and you need to be prepared for it. It's not always rainbows and lollipops, you know, but a lot of times it is. And, um, and just being aware of what could happen usually means you're not going to have trouble when, if something happens. Now, when you're keeping, um, when you're keeping a tenant in a property, the tenant can breach the lease by breaking the rules, by doing conducting illegal activity in the unit. That's one of the cases where you don't have to give the tenant an opportunity to cure the problem. If they're dealing drugs or something or cooking meth in one of your units, you can get them out right away. That's easy to do. But, um, but the tenant can breach the lease, not paying the rent, making extra keys if they're not supposed to, having a pet when they're not supposed to, but the landlord can also breach the lease. There are some uh, implied warranties is what they're called in the law. And when you sign a lease with someone, you are, they are presumed to have the warranty that they will be able to have quiet enjoyment of their property. That means there isn't gonna be construction work going on at all hours of the day and night, or the tenant busting in the door three times a day to spy on them, or any number of, of things like that and um, also uh, an implied warranty of habitability, meaning that the, the property is fit to live in. If the heat goes out and it's February, that's not a habitable apartment and the tenant doesn't have to continue to pay the rent. You are in breach of the lease as the landlord if you allow that to continue and not have it repaired right away. In fact, there are some things that are mentioned in the Attorney General's pamphlet that a landlord has a responsibility to take care of. Otherwise, the landlord would be in violation of the law. And those are things like making sure that you have sanitary facilities in good order, like toilets and running water and um, heat. You're, you're required to have an operating heating system and some other things that would be good for you to review in that pamphlet. There's also a description of what constitutes normal wear and tear and what constitutes damages for the purpose of withholding somebody's security deposit when they move out. So those are um, some good things to, um, to keep in mind. Now, remember when the tenant moves out and there's a walkthrough, it's really a good idea to have the tenant there if it's at all possible because I, again, as I said, volunteer at small claims court in Ada County. Boy, if I could tell you the number of landlord tenant cases we see, mostly it's, it's tenants who are suing the landlord to get their security deposit back because they didn't get it all back. 
I have so many funny stories. I mean, it's not funny, it's sad. I had one guy who was wanting his all of his security deposit back and the landlord said, no, I'm not giving it back to you because you smoked in the apartment. And the lease clearly said there's no smoking in the apartment. So we had to replace the carpet because it was really stinky and so we're not giving you your money back. And he argued and argued about it and he said, well, I, I only smoked in there a little, only when it was cold out. The rest of the time I went outside. So we had to show him the lease and page eight of the lease was just about a whole page about how you thou shalt not smoke or let anyone smoke in this unit. And, and I said, well, what do you think the judge is going to say when he reads this that you signed, that you agreed you wouldn't smoke in the unit? Well, I only smoked a few times, you know. Well, these kinds of things happen. And um, another time I saw where the um, many times I've seen where the tenant did not have the walkthrough paperwork, so they sued the landlord to get security deposit back. And the landlord shows up with their list, and the price list for how much the reflector pans are in the stove and the towel bar and the toilet paper holder that was broken and everything. And they've got an accounting for it. And they say, here, this is what you owe us. And, you know, actually you owe us money because we just kept your security deposit. We could have asked for more. And, and so many times um, we have a lot of tenants that here that, that don't read the lease or they don't understand what they've signed. And and don't follow the rules in the lease and didn't chose not to go on the walkthrough and they all have different stories about how clean the place was when they left how i scrubbed on my hands and knees and that stove was immaculate and, and then we see the pictures that the landlord took so you know it's just really a good idea to try to coordinate with your tenants when they move in and when they move out um it's it's um it's not always the funnest thing to do, but most people are compliant and they want to do the right thing. One thing other that I want to mention to you about the landlord's obligation to keep a property in good working order. Smoke alarms are required. Carbon monoxide detectors may or may not be required in the law, but always a good idea. I don't know if any of you remember a couple of years ago, there was a situation here in Boise where there was a gas hot water heater in an apartment that was faulty and uh, there was not a working carbon monoxide detector in the unit. A young man home from the military and his girlfriend um, fell asleep and he actually passed away from carbon monoxide poisoning due to that faulty hot water heater. And I am pretty sure there's quite a large lawsuit being filed or has been filed against that property management company for not uh, taking good care of the unit to make sure First of all, that the hot water heater was properly functioning, and second, that there was a carbon monoxide detector working around those gas appliances. So that it was a tragic, tragic story. The young lady survived, and um, and certainly wouldn't wish that on anybody. But that's kind of a worst case scenario of what can happen, and and the awesome responsibility that you have as a landlord and also as a tenant. You know, if you're the tenant and you have a tenant and the tenant tells you about something that needs to be fixed, of course you wanna fix it right away. If you're the tenant and something's broken, you probably wanna tell the landlord right away. He can't fix it if he or she doesn't know it's broken. And, and if something happens later on and you just didn't tell the landlord, that's kind of on you. Um, I had I had an interesting discussion today with another uh, with a family a, a couple husband and wife that have some of their own properties that they own and and have as rentals and I'm going to post that interview for you as well but they were telling me an interesting little tidbit that they have five rental properties and they in their houses they hire a lawn service and they hire somebody to have the furnace serviced once or twice a year and they have the lawn service come four times a year to apply fertilizer and weed killer and that sort of thing and they make sure that there's always there's somebody in and out of that house maybe once a month just to you know do some maintenance or repair they don't do any of their own and the side benefit of that is they've had a relationship with these same people these same contractors for a lot of years and They'll tell them, they'll come back and say, you know, it looks like there's a dog in that backyard. I see spots where I applied the wheat, you know, the, there's, there's spot, dead spots in the grass and it looks like there's a dog back there. And I thought you didn't allow pets or, you know, go in and check out the furnace and I smell smoke in there. It smells, somebody's been smoking in that house, you know, and just kind of, kind of eyes and ears on the ground for them. And I thought that was kind of clever of them to do that because 
they don't want to be there all the time, but they also want to keep their properties in good repair and so they can kind of kill two birds with one stone that way. I appreciate your taking the time to hear the video lecture today. I appreciate your taking the time to read through the Attorney General's pamphlet that I have posted and also um, to watch the interview that I'm going to post here shortly for um, you to get some other perspective on what it's like to be your own landlord and be have some rental properties for your own for investment. I wish you have a wonderful week and we will talk to you again in the near future.